Hello and welcome to another lesson. Today we're going to be talking about home recording studio design and moving beyond acoustics and soundproofing to talk about some of the things that are often overlooked. And one of those main things is audio cabling management, both through your walls and setting up the proper system so that you can use your home studio the way you actually want it to. And the main thing I want to put point across in this video is just to say that at the end of the day, you're not gonna care so much about soundproofing and acoustics once it's all set up and dialed in, but really you're gonna be thinking about how you use your studio on a day-to-day -day basis. And the annoying things like cable management, uh, if done wrong, can really slow you down in your work in your studio. So I hope this is helpful. Before we dive in, I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over everything you need to know about the soundproofing and acoustic side of your home recording studio. So to watch that and get a leg up over everyone else just researching YouTube endlessly, go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right. Once again, I am Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. And let's dive into this lesson on beyond soundproofing and acoustics. All right, so at this top level approach, one of the first things you really need to do before you even think too much about soundproofing and the acoustics and the nitty gritty technical stuff is to just look back and say, what is the goal of my room? Or if you're lucky enough, rooms, having multiple rooms. And you can't have a room that is primarily focused on everything. It's just simply impossible. So if your goal is mixing, the way you're going to design that room is going to be very different than if your room is for mainly just band rehearsals with your band. Now, this is not to say that 20% of the time, if you're in a band, you might be mixing and recording that band, but I would say 80% of the time, you might be jamming out, rehearsing with your band. So the structure of the room has to have a different feel, a different purpose than the guy who's spending 80% of his time mixing for clients and maybe 20% of the time hanging out with friends and jamming in his mix room space. So that is an important distinction to make. Now, if you're lucky enough to have multiple rooms, you can start to say, hey, this will be a traditional control room. We're gonna focus it on listening back to the recordings and mixing and mastering in this room, and that's gonna have a certain design element to it. And then we'll have a live room and an ISO room. And if you have the ability to do that in your home studio, then awesome. Each room can have its own ability. But with that comes the added complexity of putting it all together and the difficulty of doing that and going into what I'm gonna talk about in this video, which is really how do you wire the studio together on the audio side so that the studio is working efficiently and you're not tripping over cables, having things set up in a way where you're like, oh, I wish I had thought about that a lot before I built my studio. So this is kind of that next tier design level that you get to once you start designing and building studios. For me, since I do this full time, I'm thinking about it constantly. Like, And a lot of times clients come to me and they're a little surprised and I'm like, okay, let's talk about running cables through the walls. And they're like, I never even thought that was a possibility. And they're like, that's pretty cool. Like, can we do that? I'm like, we can do it, you know? So taking your studio to the next level, getting that professional clean look um, may be the goal. And that's what you need to start thinking about in the early design phase, not after the fact. So now let's jump into some cable management and wiring solutions for your home recording studio. In my experience, there are three major categories when it comes to cable management and networking the audio in your studio. The first one is going to be just the more traditional approach, which is what I've done in my studio, which is simply having the cords plug into my interfaces and my preamps and then running them throughout the studio how I want in the room. There's no cabling in the walls. I'm using XLR cables. If I'm using a quarter inch cable, I'm just plugging it into the quarter inch slots on my interfaces and it's very simple and this is a great approach. The second option is to take that up a notch. We're still using all analog XLR cables, but we're gonna then run them through the walls of our studio through a snake. And this is usually a custom snake with say like 16 inputs that will then run to, let's say a live room where we have a drum set. And so then we'll put a wall mounted box near the drum set. And instead of having the snake running through the room, 
it'll just have, we'll plug in the XLR cables next to the drum set. They'll run 10 to 15 feet, have the overheads, we'll run all the cabling to the drum set and voila, it's done. done. And this is a great option for professional studios where maybe you don't have a drum set there all the time so we can clean that all up. And then we still have 16 XLR inputs where we can record audio from there. Maybe we're recording a full band using those um, inputs or we're recording an acapella group, whatever you want. This is the more professional way to run your audio. On top of that, you can then run your audio back into your live room or control room and you can have a patch bay where you can then patch those 16 units of audio into your interface or you could even patch in let's say a synthesizer into different inputs on your interface so if you're in a home studio setup where say you have 16 channels of audio on your interface but you have like 32 channels of lines throughout different parts of your studio the patch bay can be a great resource for patching in different audio units into your interface since you're not going to use all 32 channels at once in your home studio necessarily. Um, so those are things you need to start to think about. And I'd highly recommend checking out uh, a website called Redco. They're probably one of the best options for this more old school approach where we're running actual snakes through the walls, running audio through the walls, um, building custom wall plates that the audio can then be soldered into. They sell patch bays where you can solder those custom snakes to the patch bay. So a lot of soldering, a lot of customizing. This is very nerdy stuff. Um, and either you need to hire someone out who knows what they're doing, or you can do it yourself if you feel comfortable soldering and understanding the basics of how everything is soldered together. So that is an option. I will say there is another uh, supplier out there called Audio Pro LA. They offer some other options that are really useful, some that come already soldered and connected together. Um, and then also um, Wallcat by Sound Tools is another really interesting company that I would check out if you have a simple setup. Um, I think they right now they're only selling four XLR inputs for like a two gang outlet box, but this actually goes in a traditional outlet box. You can putty pad around it. Um, and this, these two boxes are connected via an ethernet cat five shielded cable. So you can run the cat five cable between the two boxes in your room, but still plug in traditional analog XLR, um, inputs, which is another option. If you just need like four, uh, that's great. I think a client said that they're coming out with a 16 channel option soon. So once they do have that out, that'll be a really great option for home studios as well. To keep things simple, really easy, just run one side uh, of the wall plate near your desk and the other side, say near your drum set in the back of the room, and you can easily send cables through the walls. All right, the third option that uh, I think is potentially the best for more complex studio setups uh, is to run your audio over Cat5 Ethernet shielded cables specifically for that purpose. And Ethernet is really awesome. There's a bunch of systems out there where you can run, you know, three Ethernet cables that carry 16 channels of audio. So you're running three small cables through your walls, a lot easier than running a fat snake of 16 channels through your wall. Uh, and you can easily route different um, channels through the Ethernet system. So there's no patch bays. There's nothing complicated like that. It's all in the network itself. The downside to the system is one, it's super techie and dirty. So you have to have that mindset of like an engineer techie nerd mindset uh, to set this up. You need to do a good amount of research. Uh, and then it can get fairly expensive from my experience working with clients who want to go down this route. Um, you could spend thousands of dollars getting the setup uh, working. However, you might spend thousands of dollars doing a really complex setup anyways. Just for example, I have a client right now where we're building a soundproof studio in his garage, but he's then going to run a Ethernet network through different rooms in his house so he can record like the grand piano in his living room. He can record um, a stack, like a full stack guitar amp in a separate ISO room in his basement. And he can have the option to record in his garage where his car is if he wants like a reverb chamber effect. So I think it's a really creative approach if you're willing to take on that. Um, but it's going to be very complex. He's running, you know, I think he said like 23 Ethernet cables to do what he wants to do. So it's kind of crazy, um, but it's possible. So if 
you're going down that route, I would highly recommend a few different options. Probably the one of the most well-known options is the Dante Network by Audinate, I think is how, or Audio, Audinet. <laughs> I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Audinate. Um, and this is probably one of the well, most well-known solutions, but it is on the more expensive side. So checking out the Dante interfaces and how that's all uh, connected together would be a good starting place if you wanna go that route. AVB is another option um, that you can use, and this is good for more budget-friendly setups. Uh, if you're not interested in spending quite as much as the Dante, I would check into the AVB setup as well. And AVB just stands for Audio Visual Bridging. I've actually had experience using SoundGrid by Waves. So the company Waves that does all the plugins, they actually have their own Ethernet network connection setup. Uh, I found it super complex and irritating. However, it did <laughs> allow us to, to route um, tons and tons of different um, setups between a, a control room and a live room. And when I did use this studio, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And there's like a complex grid where you can route it instead of using patch base. Um, but like I said, I didn't love it. Um, but it is an option out there, especially if you're already using a lot of Waves gear um, and you like the Waves you know, company, this would be a good way to go as well. There's another option out there called AES67, and this one is good if you have a lot of different gear um, and you need them all to communicate with each other. This one has probably the best network options for communication between tons and tons of different studio gear. So if that's you, this might be the setup you wanna check out. And lastly, there is Q-SYC, and this is by QSC, the company that makes the speakers. And this is more than just audio. If you're also interested in video networking, uh, you can integrate this into your studio setup. Uh, this might be a good idea for those of you who don't have a control room window and you wanna do everything via, via video feeds. Uh, looking into this setup might be a great way to go. As you can see, just those options are super nerdy. This is getting into high-end network installations for like, uh, you know, communicating video and audio for networking with like CNN or things like companies that need robust and advanced features for uh, audio and networking solutions and video solutions. So as you enter into this world, know that you're you're stepping off in off a cliff into something that is just as complex as soundproofing and acoustics. Uh, however, the rewards can be extremely rewarding, especially for complex situations uh, like some of my clients have already gotten into with needing complex audio routing as well as video feeds for communication between a live room that's not directly connected to your control room. So. All of that said, I hope this has been helpful in going beyond soundproofing and acoustics to show you there's a lot to think about with a home recording studio setup that can lead to much better functionality in the long run. So in conclusion, make sure that this is a large part of your research process as well as the soundproofing and the acoustics. And if you are feeling overwhelmed, uh, that is perfectly normal. That is why people hire professional studio designers to do this stuff. And as a professional studio designer myself, I'm constantly learning and getting better. So if you're interested in working with someone who does this full time, you know, eight hours a day, six, <laughs> five days a week usually, but sometimes six or seven, uh, thinking about it constantly, that can take the workload off your plate. So if that's you and you have the budget, definitely reach out at soundproofyourstudio.com. Uh, you can sign up for a Soundproof Clarity call and talk to me directly about that. For those of you who are going the more DIY approach and wanting to do it all yourself, I still highly recommend checking out the free soundproofing workshop at my website. It's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, just giving it all away. Um, and this is, you can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thanks so much for listening to this lesson on recording studio design. And uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have more topics for videos that you wanna learn about. Uh, I'm in a new season of creating YouTube content, so I always love hearing back from those of you out there that wanna learn about different aspects of home recording studio design. Um, and I'm even interested in potentially doing some production stuff since that's a huge love of mine. Uh, but just let me know what you wanna hear about. All right. I'll see you all later.